is a 2D side-scroller that is the latest installation in the Shantae series. You play as Shantae, a half-genie, whatever that is, who has the strongest power in the world, the ability to whip people into submission with her hair and make them fly across the screen in awe. And you can also transform into different creatures such as a monkey, elephant, spider, you kind of get the general gist through the power of dance. So, DDR? The story is a very simplistic one, but no more complex than Doom. Shantae's uncle tells her a machine from the old age that can help defend Sequinland and Scuttletown from all dangers, but her nemesis Risky Boots steals the blueprints he needs in order to create the machine. So Shantae goes on a quest full of Metroidvania gameplay to get the blueprints and the components for the machine called the Dynamo. When I say Metroidvania, I mean it. There is so much backtracking to be done that you'll get sick of it if you're playing for a single session, which you can do because it takes roughly six to seven hours to complete. Not 100% completion, but still in order to complete the game. What does that tell us about the rest of the game? Well, for starters, it is fun. Aside from all the backtracking you have to do in order to finish it, speaking of backtracking, there's a ton of explorations we had in Half Genie Hero. You've got multiple levels with lots of nooks and crannies, which hold secrets, power-ups, or collectibles. However, Shantae's form isn't enough to find all these places, which is where I'd say the most important mechanic comes in, the dance transformations. Yep, she does a dance in order to change into any form that you've unlocked to traverse the levels. My favourite being the Harvey, because when you are backtracking, flying through the level without a care in the world is great, and you'll feel the same way. Platforming isn't the only thing you'll be doing. To live up to every box being ticked, there is a combat system. Like I said at the start of the review, Shantae uses her hair to beat people into submission and have bosses explode to it. There are also magical abilities she can use, but the only one that really matters is the scimitar, which is upgraded from the pike ball. Each level has a boss fight, and they are pretty fun to do and rather unique in design, such as Tasseltown's boss fight of a giant worm who you have to fire a cannonball at to dislodge its eye and whip it around a bit before the boss comes back to fight you. However, I do have one major gripe when it comes to boss fights and, I guess, enemies in general. And that's the fact that they don't actually have a health bar or hearts that indicate how much damage you're doing apart from just seeing numbers come up across the screen whenever you're using, let's say, a magical ability or Shantae's hair. I wouldn't say it matters that much when it comes to a boss fight, but really, it kind of needs one if the bosses that on a later stage, which are meant to be harder and have more health, end up being the ones that you deal with a lot quicker than the ones that you start off with. And this brings us over to another issue. The upgrade system isn't actually balanced at all. They have a completely two-dimensional form of upgrade, which is basically weak gets a strong, strong gets a strongest, which is normally how every game does it, to be honest. But they kind of have it so that way it evens out the playing field, not just make you overpowered and makes you question why even bother playing. But anyway, what do the upgrades actually consist of? There's improving Shantae's hair damage, her hair whip speed, reducing the damage you take, reducing the amount of magic that's consumed from abilities, and improving the usefulness of magic abilities you can purchase, such as Fireball turning that into a flamethrower. Throughout my playthrough of Shantae, I only came across two issues that were bothering me the most, the first being the amount of backtracking I had to do. The number of times I went back to the old zones was absurd. Get a new form, let's go back to Main Street, find a secret, go to the new zone, get another form and go back to Main Street. So that wasn't fun. Also, what the hell is so important about Main Street that you go there like seven different times? The second issue being the game becomes too easy, and if you pay attention to what the upgrades are, you start to min-max, which leads to power gaming, and I don't think Shanti was designed for power gaming, as all you need to do is upgrade her hair in damage once and get the armor, which reduces all damage by 50%, and it's an easy win. Thankfully though, these issues aren't game-breaking, one of them being an annoyance is down to how you feel about it, but the fact that the game gets easier with the upgrades, it does have an answer for that. It has hardcore mode, which is exactly as it sounds. It's hard, so getting the hair upgrades and armor is essential now, rather than just something you get to make it easy for yourself. Overall, I quite enjoyed Shantae. I wouldn't say it's great or awesome, but if you're into Metroidvania-style games, this is definitely something you'd want to play.